Hi there. Now, in an earlier video, I showed you how we prove these three hyperbolic identities. Now, what I want to show you in this video is how we can prove further hyperbolic identities as long as we are familiar with our trigonometric identities. And it's very easy through this particular rule. It's called Osborne's rule. And that rule says that all we need to do if we've got a trigonometric identity is to replace any cosine, cos if you like, with cosh. And also to replace sine with shine. But we've got to be careful. We've got to replace any product or implied product of two sine terms by minus the product of two shine terms. So for instance, if you had the sine of A times the sine of B, then replacing the sine A and the sine B with shine A, shine B, what we've got here is a product, though, of two sines. So we have to put a minus in front of it. And when it comes to an implied product, for instance, if we had tan squared A, remember tan squared A is sine squared A over cos squared A, what we've got here is a product of two sines. So we would have a negative here and it becomes shine squared A over cos squared A. In other words, tan squared A would become minus than squared A. Now I'll show you how we can use these rules when we are working with these identities here. Suppose we take the identity cos squared x plus sine squared x is identical to 1. Then if we replace cos x with cos x, then we get for cos squared x, cos squared x. But here we've got sine x times sine x. So we would have shine x times shine x, but with this rule, we would need to put a minus in front of it. So we end up with minus shine squared x is identical to 1. So using this identity, it follows then that we can develop this hyperbolic identity. Now for this next identity, we can derive this very easily through knowing this basic trigonometric identity. 1 plus tan squared x is identical to sex squared x. When it comes to tan squared x, we've got to be careful because, like we had here, it's sine squared x over cos squared x. We've got a product of two sines, so it becomes negative shine squared x over cos squared x, which is minus than squared x. And then for sex squared x, that is 1 over cos squared x, we replace the cos with cosh, so we've got 1 over cosh squared x, which is sech squared x. And for this last one, you've got to be careful with this one because you should be familiar with this identity, cot squared x plus 1 is identical to cosec squared x. Now with this one, cot squared x is the same as cos squared x over sine squared x. So that is going to have an implied product of two sines. So this would translate to minus cos squared x. And then we've got the plus 1. And this would be identical to, and cosec squared x is 1 over sine squared x, where we've got a product of two sines. So that's going to be minus 1 over shine squared x. So that would be minus cosec squared x. Now if I multiply both sides by negative 1, we're going to get plus cos squared x here, and then we're going to get minus 1, and then we're going to get plus cosec squared x. So a couple of manoeuvres there then just to get that. So each of these trigonometric identities implies the following hyperbolic 
identities. Now I've got a few more examples for you to try. I'll run through the solutions but here they are. What I want you to do is to find the identities for the following. The shine of A plus B, the cosh of A minus B, the than of A plus B and the cosh of 2A. So if you'd like to have a go at these, just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, we'll run through them and you can check your methods with mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, for the shine of A plus B, this is derived from the trigonometric identity, the sine of A plus B, which is identical to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. So when it comes to working out then the shine of A plus B, using Osborne's rule, replace the sine A here with shine A and cos B with cosh. So we've got cosh of B, shine A, cosh B. And then for the second term here, it's going to be plus cosh A, shine A. B. Okay? Now for the next one, the cosh of A minus B, then we need to turn to the identity, the cos of A minus B, which is identical to cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. And for this one then, the cosh of A minus B, well that is going to be identical to, well here we've got a product of two cosines, so we just replace that with cosh of A, cosh B. Now here we've got a product of two sines, so we're going to replace each one of these with shine, but we're going to end up with negative, a minus there, minus shine of A, and then shine of B. The next one is the than of A plus B. And for this, we turn to the trigonometric identity, the tan of A plus B, which is identical to tan A plus tan B, all divided by one minus tan A tan B. So that means that the hyperbolic identity for than of A plus B, well, again, using Osborne's rule. Now for tan A, that's sine A over cos A, so that's going to be shine A over cosh A for the hyperbolic function, and it's just going to be than A, so we've got the than of A. Similarly, for tan B, that's going to be than of B, and all of this will be divided by 1. Now for tan A, tan B, we're going to have to take care here because what we've got is shine A multiplied by shine B. So that's going to give me a negative, according to Osborne's rule here, over cosh A, cosh B. So we're going to have a, ne a double negative here. So it's going to be plus, and then that's going to convert to than of A multiplied by than of B. B. Now for the last one, cosh of 2a, then we've got to compare this to the identity for cos 2a. Now for cos 2a, we've got several options here. We'll just border that off here though. Those options are that cos 2a is cos squared a minus sine squared a, or it's identical to 1 minus 2 sine squared a, or it's identical to 2 cos squared a minus 1. So for each of these, we're going to derive three hyperbolic identities. So for cosh of 2a, then picking off this first one here, replacing cos squared a, that's going to be cosh squared a. Now for this one, sine squared A, that would be shine A times shine A, but we have to negate it according to this rule here. 
and so therefore we're going to have a double negative here so that's going to be plus shine squared a and for 1 minus 2 sine squared a well that's going to be identical to 1 plus 2 shine squared a again because we've got a double sign being multiplied together here so it'd have to switch the sign and lastly for 2 cos squared a minus 1 well that just simply becomes 2 cos squared a minus 1 so I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can apply Osborne's rule when we know our basic trigonometric identities it's so easy then to convert across to the equivalent hyperbolic identities.